Okay, thought I'd show you comparison. This is the replica three ball governor here. This is the original Unitron three ball governor. You can see that um, I attempted to replicate it pretty darn closely and I think I succeeded more or less. Of course there are some differences. One, the ball here is a little bit larger. This is I think a three quarter inch brass ball. It turns out that uh, the mass of those balls is not crucially important as long as it's substantially greater than the shaft here. The most important thing is the distance. The physics says that the distance um, from the uh, rotation point is more important, very much like the pendulum on a clock. So that will determine the period of oscillation and of course you can you can tune it anyway and it's going to you know the angle I, I calculated the approximate angle here is uh, and I attempted to set this for about 60 degrees or so and uh, it seems to be working I'm gonna show you what that looks like when I run them next to each other and you'll see that the rates are about the same and the physics determines that everything is just about the same on the two things just to give you another little angle here you can see that um, there are some very small differences, but the basic arrangement is identical. All right, here I have the original Unitron weight-driven clock drive on the left. And over here is my replica, or perhaps I should say restored, uh, Unitron clock drive because all of this pretty much is original, the gear work and so forth. The thing that I replicated was the three-ball governor and I have yet, uh, I replicated this of course and some, some other mechanical things I have yet to replicate the, replicate the little mechanical um, coupling devices that go up to the telescope but other than that it's pretty much ready to go and I'll show it to you I've got about maybe 10 pounds or so of weight on both of these so let's get them started I think an expert might be able to detect the differences between the two, uh, but it's pretty much an identical three ball governor, and it works in exactly the same way, and it works at, at about the same rate. I have found that these things, to function properly, want to turn at about 300 RPM, the balls do. And of course you can tune that. You can tune it with changing the amount of weight, uh, but more specifically you can tune it by engaging the friction here. And they should be going at about the same rate now. In both cases, balls are up, that is, the balls have lifted up and they're beginning to engage the, the little friction clutch up at the top. So it's turning at about the designed rate. And they should both track for something like 15 or 20 minutes or so. Um, I have found that it's really not too difficult to train the clock drive. That is to um, put the telescope on, say, Jupiter uh, or something else at a high power and then adjust the rate it just takes a few minutes to tweak it a little bit this way, tweak it a little bit that way to get just the right sidereal rate. And of course it does depend, it will depend on how much you're driving the telescope. It always works best as an escapement where the telescope is trying to fall in the direction of right ascension. But you can see they're both working quite nicely. I'm very happy, happy with my replica. It's working just as well as the, as the original. So there you have it. I'll show you some close-ups here in a moment. This is a close-up of the replica. And you can see that it's, uh, it looks just like the original. I don't know if you can see it in the... You might be able to see it. There's a, a little sort of a clutch that comes up. As the balls go out it forces a little clutch to come up and engage a friction device there. 
and I'm pushing, I'm cre increasing the friction now. I just change it slightly and it doesn't respond instantaneously. The response, there's a fairly substantial lag time before it really responds. By the way, you hear some whirring, that's the other clock drive working at the same time. Why don't I stop that one so you can get a sense of what this one sounds like by itself. You may be able to pick that up on the video. Let's let her out a little bit. Open it up some. You can see the balls going out. I'm pretty sure you can see that on the video. And it's starting to kick up. I've got about 10 pounds or so driving this at this point. Of course, it doesn't have any load on it. So if you had a heavier load on it, uh, and driving a telescope and so forth, you probably you, you might need more weight. You might need 15, 20 pounds. I've discovered that these things are very robust. They can easily take plenty of weight here with no problem. It's not going to damage anything. Uh, all right, that's pretty much that's pretty much wide open. I think you can hear it speeding up. You can probably see it. It's still touching the friction points just a little bit. Now that's full balls out. And by that I mean that the balls are as far out as they can go physically. So it's spinning at essentially its maximum, it's certainly its maximum tunable rate. And the effective rate that you would want to use would be somewhere in between, something like that maybe. Okay, I'll close it down and we'll take a close-up look at the other one. Okay, now we're looking at the original Unitron. This, by the way, over here, that blue tape is strictly to keep this straight up because if I don't have it straight up, it tends to get clobbered up here and stop the mount. Always freaks me out a little bit when it does that. It's not really doing any harm or anything. It just kind of clobbers it up. Now I'm opening it up, and I've got about, oh, maybe 10 pounds, a little bit more on it. You can see that the operation is essentially identical. It's speeding up. Takes it a while to get up to speed. And it's not quite lifting yet. Balls are not out yet. It's getting close though. Yeah, it's starting to lift a little bit. Now it should be running pretty much full speed. Yeah, it's getting up there now. This is pretty much balls out here. Okay, let's shut her down. It really doesn't take very much friction at all to stop this thing completely. There's not much rubbing there, I guarantee it. And it brings it to a complete halt. I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of these two Unitron weight-driven clock drives. Thank you.